Hello everyone. I haven't made any videos in quite some time, you know, but today's look is going to be... I'm feeling like something quite full on, something quite strong, something with lots of plums. I'm just in the mood for something a little bit different. And I know spring, sort of this time of year, sort of April, May, isn't really the most appropriate time for plums. I think it's more of an autumnal colour. I feel like doing something with those kind of colours. Now I've already done my base and foundation concealer and set it through with powder and I've drawn on my eyebrows. I'm not going to talk through the products that I used today but I will leave a list of the products I used in the description as always. Now my hair is looking a little bit straggly so I think I'm going to do it at the end once I'm completely ready. To begin with I'm going to apply a base to the eyes and I'm going to use this Maybelline colour tattoo in the shade Metallic Pomegranate. I bought this quite recently and despite these being very cost effective, you know, I think they're only about five pounds in the United Kingdom, they are worthy of merit, certainly. This is a very plummy colour, but there is a golden reflex to it. I'm only going to smoke a little bit of it underneath the eye as well. Now, I don't really care about it being too neat, but I'm just sort of doing uh, a little, might wing it out slightly. Then I'm taking a Zoa 227 brush and I'm just blending. I have to work quite quickly with these products because they do set. But this is just sort of my overall base. I'm not really bothered whether or not it's neatly done or anything. Now I'm winging it up slightly because I'm thinking about doing um, a look that's probably very typical for me, which is a cat eye. Feline eyes are very striking, but also very feminine, I think, certainly. You can also apply a little bit more if you feel like you've taken a lot of the colour away. So that's the base applied. Now, you could just leave it like this and go with mascara and maybe add a little bit of a cold pencil and sort of smudge it in and smoke in. Teddy by MAC would be a great choice. I'm going to go considerably further today and apply a lot more makeup because I'm in the mood for something quite full on. So I'm going to go in with this colour by Inglot and it's the shade 450 and it's a very beautiful sort of whiny burgundy colour. It's got a bit of shimmer to it. It's very similar to Cranberry by MAC if you're familiar with the colour but um, I'm going to go in with this colour instead today. I'm just applying that on a MAC 239 brush. Again I'm going to be placing this quite high up because I'm going to blend it, blend it out. Once you have the initial shape in, you can actually take it underneath as well. I can take it quite far down because I've got quite hooded eyes. Then I'm going back in with my 228 brush by Zova. And I'm just going to blend the underneath ever so slightly. And start to blend the top. Sort of with windscreen wiper motions back and forth. And if you find that it starts to get a little bit muddy looking, just take in a clean blending brush. Start to blend the edges of what you've already blended. And once you have it all sort of blended, um, you can really add more and more of the colour. Now I'm just going to add this colour called Sketch by MAC. And it's sort of a, it's a very unusual colour. It's like a cross between a brown and a plum and a purple. It's a great colour though. And I'm just going to use that to smoke the lower lash line. I'm also just going to do a little bit on top as well. And once you have that done, I'm just taking a Zova 231 brush and just smoking it a little bit. But the great thing about this brush, it's sort of like a cross between a blending brush and a crease brush. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to take some more of that sketch colour and quite a bit of it. And then I'm just placing it sort of on the outer quadrant of the eye. So it's I've got very hooded eyes, as you might be able to tell, so that means when my eyes open and look directly ahead, um, there's no visible crease line. So what I do is I sort of raise my eyebrows ever so slightly, and you can see the crease slightly then, but I draw in the socket just above the crease, and I blend it in, rather than sort of drawing heavily. And that's probably as much as I'm going to do, and then I'm just going to blend that back in. The trick to having a good blend is really just, if you're too heavy with your brush, you, it'll start to look quite messy. So really just try to be as gentle as you can be. And build up, so by adding a little bit more, and then blending. Then a wee bit more, and then blend again. You start to build up a gradient of colour, and it, it's far easier to blend that way. And it, it looks much better because it's, it's a lot more seamless. Now I'm going to add black to this outer corner, but I'm going to do it once I've drawn my black flick because it can start to look overpowered. I'm going to use the same brush that I was doing for the socket. Fill that in, but I'm just using the point of it. So I'm starting to look as if I've sort of been punched in the eye, which is probably quite a frivolous way to describe this look. But I'm just going to apply a little bit more, about 450 
just to the eyelid again as we've lost some of its intensity. Now I, I, I truly do grasp that this look isn't necessarily for everybody, but I'm certainly in the mood. The overall eyeshadow for this look is more or less finished. It's quite a winged, quite a smoky look, um, very full on. But I'm going to add one last product in terms of shadows and then I'll add mascara and liner. But I'm going to add this very beautiful pigment by MAC and it's called Reflex Bronze. Now I'd say it's more of a gold. Now when it comes to gold eyeshadow and bronze eyeshadows, I'm a little bit like Smog the Dragon. I absolutely love golds and bronzes. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I'm just applying that very lightly just in that corner. I find when you work with like glittery pigments or things, if you apply like a clump of it, it sort of, it ruins the, 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 the blackness on the texture of liner. And you can just take a clean brush and blend the edges. So to complete the eyes, I'm going to go in with a little bit of black gel liner and I'm using the Inglots one. You don't really need to be that neat with this because we're going to be doing the top and bottom. And by using a brush like this, usually I use an angle brush, I'm not really fond of those pointy brushes, I don't find that they are that effective. But using a pointy brush to apply the colour to the lower lash line, you can actually smudge whilst you go along. Then take your blending pencil brush and smudge in that black. And then once you've lined the eye, just start to draw a wing and pull it over. It doesn't really matter if it's necessarily neat or messy, um, just as long as the root of the lash is pitch black. So that's the line more or less of complete. Now I've gone for a very full on cat eye as you can see, but uh, I was kind of in the mood for something rather bold. I've curled my lashes and I'm now just going to apply Max Zoom Lash Mascara. I'm not going to apply too much, I'm just going to blacken the lashes as I'm going to add false lashes to the top and bottom. For lashes I'm going to use this brand of lashes that I've recently discovered and, the, and it's called Prima Lash. Um, I, I got it from eBay actually, it's an eBay seller that I bought it from and I'm always a little bit dubious. I know it sounds bizarre and it sounded bizarre to me at first you know, buying lashes off eBay but it was one of my friends um, who isn't actually a makeup artist but is very fond of false lashes and she'd suggested them to me and uh, I was slightly dubious to begin with but then I tried them out and they're actually pretty good and I think for the price they're about £2.50 for a packet and you get, so if you get five I've used three of these and I go through packets and packets of these in my work. So I've applied lashes to the top and bottom lash line and I'm just going to go in with some of my Studio Fix powder foundation in the shade Shimmering White. Well, I must say, it's a rather strange name for what appears to be a very matte product. Shimmering white. I don't think I'm going to apply blush to this look, but I'm going to add a little bit of Max Omega, just as a contour. I think you can actually get a much more accurate, yet very seamless shape of contour when you use sort of a brush that's rounded as opposed to something that's angled. And for highlighter, I've got a lot of this kind of colour. I tend to collect this as well as gold eyeshadows um, because I absolutely love the finish. But I'm going to use Static by Ella Masca as my highlighter. And it's a very, very sort of pinky pearlescent colour. My philosophy in regards to this colour is pack on as much as you can because I think it just looks absolutely beautiful on very fair skin. I don't know if my camera will be able to pick that up, but it just gives the most beautiful sort of sheen to the skin. I think it's the, one of the most appropriate colours to use on fair skin because a lot of highlighters have some sort of gold to them or sort of bronze. My skin is of course very, very cool in tone, so if you apply something that's got golds or bronzes, their colours are very warm. If it's got a very warm undertone, you can really see it and it just makes my skin look quite dirty. Even though this colour is very unnatural, it does flatter pale skin uh, tremendously, I find. I don't really like highlighter down the nose, certainly on noses that are quite like mine that are very thin and very fat at the tip, but I like to just apply a little bit of it just to the bridge of the nose. And I love it in photographs, um, particularly in editorials, when there's a little bit of a sheen there. I think it just looks, uh, it looks stunning. So uh, I just apply a little bit of that colour just to the bridge of the nose and just here, because I've got quite a protrusive brow bone, I've spoken about that previously in other videos, it's certainly the most masculine part of my face. So uh, I add a little bit of light into the indent there, not too much on the actual forehead or the brow bone because that will bring it forward. 
and I apply a little bit to the chin as well. The only thing you have to be, the only thing I would say you have to be really careful about these kinds of pigments is sometimes they can make you look a little bit green. There's sort of the pigment, if I were to describe it as being like a Rubik's cube, three sides of it would be green and the other three would be purple. So in different lights it can look a bit green. I'm just going to add a little bit of Max Pink Freeze, which is very similar to the static that I used on the cheeks, but I'm just going to place it just in the center of the eye. It's almost like a spotlight, but I'm going to use the Spice Lip Liner by MAC and uh, of course I'm going to overdraw. I think it would probably be an insult to the rest of the look if I didn't. When overdrawing lips and creating the illusion that your lips are bigger, it's best to go for something that's uh, of course matte. Um, I don't really think there's many lip liners that are shimmery, but go for something that's slightly darker than your natural lip colour. So with the lip liner applied, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of Max Jubilee lipstick. So that more or less completes the look. It's a very, very full-on look, I must say. Uh, a little bit more full-on than I'd originally gone for. But I was kind of in the mood for doing something quite out there. I haven't really been posting that much on YouTube. I've just been really, really busy, but I am planning to make a return. And it might be a little bit ambitious of me to attempt, but I'm hoping to upload a video at least once a week. So I would really, really appreciate if you could sort of leave comments in regards to what sort of looks you'd actually like to see, what sort of things you'd like me to talk about um, in regards to makeup, my work, etc. However, I've been a little bit dubious to talk about anything personal on YouTube, but I am considering maybe doing a questions and answers video. It depends on what questions I, I gain, but uh, if you have any, then I'd absolutely love to hear. Um, I also have to notify you that my website is currently under redevelopment, so you won't be able to see any of my actual work there. However, I post the majority of my work on my Instagram account anyway, and it's just cosmetic consultant, just like my YouTube, that's the username. Or if you hashtag makeup by John McLean or hashtag John McLean, um, and you should be able to find it. But anyway, I hope that you find this helpful, even though it's been a very, very unwearable look. But um, a few of my viewers I know will quite like the extra lash. But um, once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care of yourself. Bye.